Hare Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse number 2. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Balava Giri Varadhari Gopi Janabhava Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Balava Giri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Jana Balava Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Om Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Paribraja Gacharya Astu Tarasata Shri Shri Madhesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Siddha Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nama Chaja Sila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prince Kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasadi Gura Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopu Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Sri Vrindavan Mathuradam ki jai, Navadip Mayapurnham ki jai, Jumuna mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Tulsi Devi ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse 2. Adhyagya katam kotra dehesmin madhusudana pranaya kalicha katam preyosi nityamarbha Adhyagya katam kotra dehesmin madhusudana Pranaya kali chakatham nyeyusi niyatatma bihi adhyagya katam kotra dehesmin madhusudana pranaya prayana kali chakatham nyeyusi niyatatma bihi adhyagya katam kotra Dehesmin madhusudana prayana kalichakatam nyeyunityatma bihi 
Adyayagnya, the Lord of Sacrifice. Katham how? Kahu, atra here, dehe in the body. Asmin in this, Madhusudana o Madhusudana. Prayana kale, at the time of death. Cha and katham how? Nyeya be known. Asi you can. Niyatatma bihi by the self controlled. Translation and purpose by Srila Prabhupada. How does the Lord of Sacrifice live in the body? And in which part does he live, O Madhusudana? And now, can those engaged in devotional service know you at the time of death? Purport. The Lord of Sacrifice accepts Indra and Vishnu. Vishnu is the chief of the primal demigods, including Brahma and Shiva, and Indra is the chief of the administrative demigods. Both Indra and Vishnu are worshipped by yagna performances. But here Arjuna asks, who is actually the Lord of Yagna, sacrifice, and how is the Lord residing within the body of the living entity? Arjuna addresses the Lord as Madhusudana because Krishna once killed a demon called Madhu. Actually, these questions, which are of the nature of doubts, should not have arisen in the mind of Arjuna because Arjuna is a Krishna conscious devotee. Therefore, these doubts are like demons. Since Krishna is so expert in killing demons, Arjuna here addressed him as Madhusudana, so that Krishna might kill the demoniac doubts that arise in Arjuna's mind. Now the word Prayana Kale in this verse is very significant because whatever we do in life will be tested at the time of death. Arjuna fears that at the time of death, those who are in Krishna consciousness will forget the Supreme Lord because at such time bodily functions are disrupted and the mind may be in a panic-stricken state. Therefore, Maharaj Kula Shekara, a great devotee, prays, My dear Lord, May I die immediately, now that I am healthy, so that the swan of my mind may enter into the stem of thy lotus feet. The metaphor is used because the swan often takes pleasure in entering the stem of the lotus flower. Similarly, the mind of the pure devotee is drawn to the lotus feet of the Lord. Maharaj Kula Shekara fears that the moment of death his throat will be so choked up that he will not be able to chant the holy names. So it is better to die immediately. Arjuna questions how one's mind can remain fixed on, the, on Krishna's lotus feet at such times. Adhyayagnya katam kotra dehesmin madhusudana pranaya kali chakatam nyeyusi niyata atma bihi. So we continue on this chapter, chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita, attaining the Supreme. That is the purpose of life, to attain the Supreme. There is no other business. There is nothing else to do in life except to become Krishna conscious because we are eternally Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness is eternally present within our heart there is no other business of life. And if there is any other business, it should be connected to Krishna. Because anything connected to Krishna becomes exposed to the light of truth. Illusion and ignorance can only thrive on the back of Krishna. If we forget Krishna, then we forget what is actual truth. The actual truth is that we are eternal servants of God. We are not the body. We are not male or female bodies. We are not Hindus or Christians or Jews or Americans or Germans or English. We are 
Brahma Asmi. We are Asmi, I am Brahma spirit. We are spirit soul. We are the Tatashta or the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord. We are the sons of God. We are created by God so we can enjoy a loving relationship. Along with our existence, our eternal rasa or relationship, loving relationship with God is present within the heart. And if we keep our heart connected to Krishna, if we always take advice from within the heart, that is called our conscious, conscious. Uh, when we do something right, we actually feel within the heart that this is something good. And when we do something wrong, when we become sinful or aggressive or give pain to others, we feel that this is not right. This feeling within the heart, this conscious, is coming from the super soul. So the more we keep taking advice from the super soul, the more we, t we keep our consciousness connected to the super soul, then the more we will live in truth. And the more we turn away, the more we, we misuse our independence, then the more we become covered by ignorance. So much so that we even lose the human body. Pranaya Kale says, yeah, Prayana Kale, at the end of death, Yam Yam Svapi Smaram Bhavam Tyajati Ante Kalevaram. Ante Kalevaram means at the end of the body, Yam Yam Vapi, at that time, Smaram Bhavam, whatever nature we manifest, whatever nature is present in our heart, Tam tam eva hiti konteya sada tad bhava bhavita. At that time, we will go. That nature will take us to a place where that nature is actually reflected. So if we live like animals, if we don't take advantage of the instructions of the super soul within the heart, if we live independently of God, then we lose the human form of life. Because the human form of life is meant only for spiritual advancement. This eating and sleeping and sex and defense, hmm? a hard eating, nidra sleeping, bhaya fearing, uh, and maituna sex life, that is common with man and animal. Actually, every one of these four items that comprise life eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Each one of them can be pursued and enjoyed better in animal life. For example, if you want to eat whatever you want, you cannot actually do it in a human body. Certain foods will be harmful for us. But if you take the body of a pig, you can eat whatever you want. A pig, it will eat anything from... Uh, good food to the worst possible kind of food, stool. And similarly, if you want to enjoy sex life, you cannot surpass the sex enjoyment of a monkey or a pigeon. They can have sex many times an hour. Monkey has dozens and dozens of girlfriends. It's very rare for a man to have many, many lovers or a woman to have many, many lovers. It is not common. So sex life can be better enjoyed in animal life. Sleeping, so who can beat the bears? They sleep the whole winter. Other animals also sleep a long time. It's part of their nature. So if you want to sleep a lot, then better you do it in the form of a bear or other animal. And defending, well, there are some ferocious animals that no one can attack them. Lions and tigers, elephants, rhinoceros, hippopotamus, crocodiles, they are so powerful, their enemies are afraid of them, much more powerful than we are. So if you want to defend, the mechanism for defense is better given to us in the animal kingdom. So this animal kingdom is created by Krishna to satisfy our material desires. The only difference between living in the animal kingdom, having an animal body, and having a human body is that in a human body, we can inquire about spiritual life. In the human body, we have a choice to control and to exercise 
intelligence on these four principles of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. How we sleep, how we eat, how we mate, and how we defend can be controlled and can be refined and can be spiritualized in the human body. It cannot be done in a dog body. And the main and most important facility of a human body is the process of hearing. We can hear. You know, if I'm giving a lecture in a room to human beings, they can hear what I'm saying. They can relate. But if I invite the animals of the of the of the city all the dogs and cats and try to teach them spiritual life it will not work as soon as you put more than two or three cats and dogs together there'll be pandemonium they don't have the power to hear therefore if we don't exercise the hearing power when we're in the human body then we lose it use it or lose it and at the moment of death if those four items of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, those four items, our attachment to them, and the way we have pursued them in human life will, will uh, cause us to take many, many, many animal births. In one human life, we can accrue reactions to go into many, many, many in one human life, we can accrue the reaction to take many, many, many animal lives afterwards. So we have to be careful. We have to, and the best way to be careful is to take advice from the super soul within the heart. Therefore, Krishna says, Sarvasya Chaham Ridi Sanivishto. I am situated in everybody's heart. Mata, from me, smriti, jnanam, apuanamcha. Remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness is coming from me. Krishna gives us the power to remember, to forget, and he gives us knowledge according to our capacity, according to our capacity to receive it, and according to our qualification to receive it. Not everybody can be taught by Krishna unless he wants to be taught. Therefore, the great boon given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. By chanting the name of Krishna, we come into contact with Krishna. We suddenly become by awakened to the existence of the Lord in our heart. And the more we keep in contact with that Lord, the more we take his advice, the more we engage our life in re-establishing our relationship with him then the more we become purified and the more we go towards the light the more we become enlightened the more when we come to the moment of death instead of remembering our eating sleeping mating and defending and all those corollaries from that we will remember krishna and we will go to krishna it is once you connect with krishna your life becomes progressive Krishna says, Neha Bikrama Nasho Asti. This process of approaching me, Krishna says, it is so wonderful that there is no loss. Neha Bikrama Nasho, there is no loss. Pratyavayu Chavidyate, there is no diminution. Krishna says, whatever you gain in understanding my relationship with you will never be lost and will never be diminished. Swalpam api, even if you practice a little bit, swalpam, swalpam means very little, api, despite of, swalpam api, yasya dharmasya, in this duty, in this activity, in this dharma, trayate mahatobayat, you become free from the greatest fear. And what is the greatest fear? The greatest fear is that we come to the moment of death without realizing our eternal relationship with Krishna. And as we can see, in the world that we live, 99.9% .9 of people have no interest in Krishna. They are not qualified. They have come to the human form of life, but it, they act like animals on two legs. So, the devotees are always protected by Krishna. And specifically in Kali Yuga, this Kali Yuga, we are protected 
Balo Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jiva Dayapuri. His main business is to give mercy to the Jivas. I've often explained in these classes that the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a kind of a spiritual amnesty. If we simply bow down to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and accept his program, immediately we become free from all previous karmas, previous activities, all the reactions of the spirit become null and void. All our criminal past becomes written off. Just like when you go in front of a judge, you get punished for your crimes. Once you paid your punishment, you're free from that crime. So Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jiva Doya Kori, he came, his avatar or his incarnation has come to give mercy. Sa Parshad Suyadam, he doesn't come alone. Mahaprabhu came with his own abode, Navadvip Dham. To this day, you can go to Navadvip and you can actually feel the presence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Suyad Sa Parshad, and he came with his associates. Parshad means Lord Nityananda, Lord Advaita, Gadada, Srivas, all the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These are called Parshads. They're all Krishna's uh, assistance in giving out mercy and in understanding and knowledge. So, what was the main business of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Atyanta Durlaba Prema Kori Dhan. He gave, or Dhan, he gave the gift of Durlaba Prema. Durlaba Prema means love. What kind of love? Durlaba, difficult. Atyanta Durlaba, very, very difficult. Atyanta means unlimited times. Durlaba means difficult. So there's very, very difficult blessing. This very, very difficult jewel of our relationship with Krishna was given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for free just so that we can become uh, enlightened. We can revise our connection with Krishna. We can understand that everything is coming from Krishna. If you read the Bhagavad Gita, practically in every chapter, Krishna explains that he is the Supreme Lord and we are his eternal servants. There are four verses in Bhagavad Gita in the 10th chapter, which are considered the root or the, the, the basic foundation of Bhagavad Gita. Huh? 10, 8, 10, 9, 10, 10, and 10, 11. And then at the end of the Bhagavad Gita from 18 chapter verse 61 to verse 66, the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita is given. But before you understand the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, you have to understand the root. So what is the root? Krishna says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartati. Everything is coming from me. Aham sarvasya, everything. Prabhavo is being manifested. Matta, from me, sarvam pravartati. Everything is manifested. Iti. Iti matva bhajantemam buddha bhava samanvitaha. One who understands this, one who sees Krishna everywhere, when one who understands that Krishna is the actor behind every manifestation in this material world, then buddha bhava, he becomes buddha, intelligent, and he becomes engaged in worshiping Krishna. How? Machita, he thinks of me. Madgata prana, his life. His pran, his very life, is dedicated to Krishna. And Bodhayantas Parasparam is doing what we are doing now, talking about Krishna. This is our business. We don't talk about karma. We don't talk about jnana. We don't talk about yoga. We talk about Krishna. When we listen to something, we should be eager to hear Krishna, Krishna's word. As I've explained before, sometimes they get involved in conversations, even with devotees. And they have so many plans, they have so many stories, but I'm waiting to hear where is the attachment to Krishna? Where is that love for Krishna that it is so present within you that you cannot go more than two or three sentences without mentioning the name of Krishna? Better you live alone and don't talk to anybody unless you can speak about Krishna. So. Machita, Madgata Prana, that is called Gata Prana, that your, your life, 
very life is dedicated to Krishna. Bodhayantas parasparam. And you talk about Krishna with the devotees of Krishna. You enlighten one another. When you study Bhagavad Gita, when you study Prabhupada's books, when you listen to Prabhupada's lectures, you're exchanging with him. That is called uh, Bodhayantas. You're enlightening. You're becoming enlightened by the, by, the, by the conversation. Prabhupada says he will never die. He's always living in his books. What does that mean? That means if you take advantage of Prabhupada's books, you build a dialogue with him. Don't think that Prabhupada is not present. He is present by the mercy and by the power of the super soul. He's present within the heart. The super soul is the go-between, which connects us to Prabhupada to this very day. So, Katayanta Shamam Nityam, the discussion about Krishna and our relationship with Krishna and how Krishna, Krishna Katha, Katha means how, how Krishna performs his activities. Hmm? It is, uh, it is eternal. There is no end to it. You never become tired. And to Shanticha Ramanticha, you become peaceful and you become surcharged with happiness. You will not find any other happiness anywhere except the happiness of Krishna consciousness. There is nothing. And when you get it, you will think there is nothing worth having. There is, it is the greatest gift. And when you come to the stage, then Krishna reciprocates with you, Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. Those who worship me, those who connect Yuktanam, who connect their lives to me. What does it mean to worship Krishna? It doesn't just mean to chant some prayers or to chant some japa. No. Worshiping Krishna means to invite him in your life, to make him your friend, your guru, your father, your, your everything, your family, everything connected with Krishna. Krishna becomes the center of your activities, the center of your life. You eat for Krishna, you cook for Krishna, you sleep for Krishna, you dream of Krishna. Hmm? This is the Satata Yuktanam. This is the eternal connection. It is so beautiful, you don't become tired. So Priti Purvakam, Krishna says, think of me in a loving way. Demons also think of Krishna but they think of him in a negative way. So don't think of Krishna in a negative way. Otherwise, uh, it will not make progress. So what happens to those devotees who think of Krishna in a positive way? Then da da me, I will give, Krishna said, da da me, ami me, da means to give. I will give Buddha yoga, real intelligence. Yeah, what kind of intelligence? Yena mam upayantite through which they can come to me. And then the fourth verse, Tesham eva nukam partam aham jnana jam tamaha nasayami atma bhavastu jnana deepena bhashrataha. Those devotees who dedicate their lives to me, Krishna says, I will enlighten their hearts. I will remove the darkness from the heart but the light of knowledge, jnana deepena. Deepa means light and jnana means knowledge. So when you be jnana deepena, bashvata means to glow. Hmm? And what, what is the result of this light of Krishna within the heart? Nashayami, atma bhavashto. Nashayami means to destroy all the tama, all the ignorance. And when you come to this point, then your life becomes, becomes successful. It doesn't matter where you are. There is a, a verse in the Bhagavatam that says that the devotees of Krishna are called Narayana Para, that they have no other business beyond Narayana, beyond Krishna. Krishna becomes their life and soul. It is called Narayana Para. Narayana Para means that Narayana is the most important thing in my life. Hmm? So, Narayana para sarve na kutaschan bibyati. Swarga apavarga narakeshu apitulya tadarshana. That a devotee of Krishna is so happy with his relationship with Krishna that the surroundings 
which are in the material world or in the, any surrounding become unimportant. The connection with Krishna becomes important. So whether he's living in heaven or whether he's living in hell or whether he's liberated or whether he's in the material world, it doesn't make any difference. This verse was spoken by Lord Shiva to his wife Durga. There was an exchange uh, that uh, Durga Devi, she cursed one devotee and the devotee, he accepted the curse. So Lord Shiva said, just see Devi, my dear wife, this is a devotee of Krishna. Even you curse him, he doesn't care whether he lives in heaven or whether he lives in hell. And we can see the stories, for example, Krishna's most important devotees during his Leela on this planet, of course, Vrindavan is the apex with the gopis and the gopas and his coward boyfriends. But in his material dealings, when he went to Mathura and Dwarka, when he dealt on the political platform, when he dealt as a king, when he dealt in uh, in day-to-day -day activities which reflect our material life, his most important associates were the Pandavas. They were so attached to Krishna, there is no words or comparison. And even though they suffered so much, their love of Krishna never diminished. This was explained to Krishna that Madhya Krishna, the Pandavas, they lost their kingdom, they were insulted, their wife was insulted, they were cheated, they had to go to the forest, they were attacked from childhood, they were attacked by their cousins, their uncle, the regent, Dhritarashtra, wanted them dead. But despite all these problems, their love for you never diminished one iota. And this is the position of a devotee. That Krishna, you may embrace me. Ashlishava. Ashlisha means to embrace me. Padaratam pinashtumam. You may stamp me down under your feet. Ashlishyava padaratam pinashtumam adarshanam. You may not give me your darshan. I may not be able to see you. Marmahatam. I will suffer so much. But prananatas tu saeva. However, tu, you are my prananat. You are my life and soul. Don't think that we see Krishna with our eyes. That may come. One day we will see Krishna face to face. Just like you can see me. And I can see you. But that seeing is a special blessing. It is non different from the seeing by hearing and exchanging with Krishna within the heart. Krishna is not manifested by material. He is manifested by hearing and chanting. Good. So Krishna is manifested in our hearts when he sees that we are actually welcoming him. Just like a good, a dear friend, uh, when you invite him to come, he's very happy to come to your house. He's very happy to come to see you, to exchange with you, because he feels that love of acceptance. He feels that you created an atmosphere of affection and respect for him, and he becomes very happy to step into that situation. This is human nature, and we get this human nature from Krishna. Our human nature is a reflection of Krishna's nature. So Krishna has the same feelings. So when we make the situation pretty purvakam, with pretty, with devotion, with love and affection, Krishna is very happy to come. Just like he says, if you offer me some food with love and devotion, then I eat, but only with love and devotion. He's not actually eating the food. He's is exchanging the loving exchange. This is what attracts Krishna. Thank you very much. So we have several comments. Uh, Madhu Mangala Devi is here. Atma Vidya, Hare Krishna Prabhu, Pranjal Joshi, a wonderful Brahmin from Jaipur. Uh, Albert the Force, Vrishnivamsa, Krishna Stu, Bhagavan Swayam, 
I agree. Luna Mitra Baral. Uh, Pran, Pran, Pranjal Joshi says that my heart is full of love of Krishna. I wish. I'm worshipping Krishna because I'm an old man and I'm afraid of death. Shakti Somangali from Den Haig. Hare Krishna. I love the class, but I have a question. When you chant Hare, so many sins from many lifetimes are destroyed. Or if you hear or read about an Ekadashi, Krishna himself says that all the misdeeds of past life are destroyed. But why do we still suffer? If the sins get destroyed, why are you still suffering? Because the sins are destroyed. Uh, our interaction with other living entities which have caused so many karmas, they are adjusted by Krishna. But our desire to be independent, our desire to be disconnected, to be to be independent, to be away from Krishna, to enjoy Krishna's property, that has to be cleansed away by our attachment to Krishna. So the karma is destroyed, but our propensity to commit karma is gradually being destroyed, being washed away by our ongoing newer and newer, fresher and fresher dealings with Krishna. So that takes a little time. Madhu Mangala Devi Dasi, why those verses you mentioned regarding chapter 10 and chapter 18 in particular are so important? Well, the verses from chapter 10 are important because they are the root of existence. They are, if you understand those four verses, then the essence of the Bhagavad Gita has been put there. And the verses of the 18th chapter uh, describe the symptoms of a person who has actually reached Krishna consciousness. And Krishna's instru instructions are included in those verses of the 18th chapter, 61 to 66. If you follow those six verses, then you will achieve success. Good. So I thank you for participating. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Hare Krishna.